In today's video, we're working on fat loss. We're trying to take our physique from something like this and we're trying to lose body fat and end up something like this. Now your goals may not be the same as mine, but the purpose of this video is to explain to you how do we make adjustments along the way? How do we reach our ultimate physique? How do we adjust cardio? How do we adjust our nutrition? When do we take a break from the process of fat loss? And we're starting right now. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I wanna explain the process of when we go through losing body fat, how do we make adjustments? What do we do to ensure that we keep making progress? I would love to tell you that, hey, it's just calories in versus calories out, baby. So anytime you hit a stall, just eat less and move more. And while that's certainly part of the equation, if that worked, everyone would be lean. But the fact is that a very small percent of the population ever get anywhere near as lean as I get. But anybody can, okay? And it's all about an approach that is gonna require adjustments. And sometimes those adjustments are gonna be things you don't wanna do. And I'm not talking about doing more cardio or eating less calories, okay? Sometimes the adjustment is you need some recovery. So let's start with the first step. What is the first thing you need to do when it comes to getting a physique like this? I'll put some videos on the screen here so you can see what I'm talking about. This physique that you see here represented on the screen is something that has taken me, I don't know, years, decades to kind of learn to craft. But if I had a lot of this information that I'm about to give you guys, it would have taken me a lot less time. You see, I'm a six foot three natural bodybuilder, right? Been lifting weights for many years. But it took me many years to realize that it wasn't just lifting weights and eating like a jerk that was required to look great, okay? To have the look that I wanted, the, the shredded look. And body composition can be different from person to person, but I actually got to the point where I did decide to take it to the next level and get on a bodybuilding stage. And I found that that, for me, was the ultimate test of mind, body, and spirit. And it really gave my competitive juices that focus that I needed. And I think what a lot of us don't have when it comes to reaching this lean body composition is a focus, is a why. Uh, a lot of us are just maybe just trying to get healthy. And maybe for you, that's enough. So let's talk about the question that I got on my Instagram right now. So here's the Instagram. If you guys have questions, go there. Now, I really appreciate the questions. I've been getting a lot lately. I'll try to keep up but please have patience because what I like to do is go through them and uh, make videos. And sometimes I got a little bit more time to make videos and, and I will get to a point where I'm doing more frequently. It's only been two weeks since I started my fat loss journey and I have lost three pounds and now it seems I've hit a plateau. For the past three days, my body weight fat percent have remained the same. This happened to me in the past and I would stay committed to the gym for months with no results to show and would eventually give up. I weigh all my food, I'm very strict. How do I know when to make adjustments to break through plateaus and adjustments? What should I make? To give you context, I'm 35, 250 pounds, 29% body fat, male. I consume roughly 2,500 calories a day with 279 grams of carbs, 66 grams of fat, 217 grams of protein. I work out seven days a week, five weight training days with 10 minutes of low intensity cardio after each session. My two cardio days are also low intensity for about 45 minutes. So first of all, thank you for all the great information. Um, a lot of the decisions I make as a coach come down to having a really good understanding of what's going on. So the first thing that you guys have to do in order to reach your goals is to actually understand what's going on, okay? So before we discuss how I'm gonna make the changes, if you don't know how many calories you're taking in, and by taking in, I mean if you're not weighing your food, if you're not measuring your food, that's called guesstimating or estimating, and those estimates can be off by 20, 30, 50%, maybe even more. And if you're tracking your food based on what the restaurant says they're making you, that can be wildly off as too. Really the only way to know for sure is to weigh your food and prepare your own food. Now I'm not suggesting that's the only way to be successful, but I am suggesting if you're serious about your physique, you gotta start there. You gotta start to understand. You gotta start to be accountable to yourself. And that starts with understanding nutrition, okay? You can't say that you wanna be a professional race car driver and not understand what's going on in that engine of that car. So if you want to be a better version of yourself, a better physique, start learning about nutrition, okay? I have a free ebook. I've got multiple free ebooks on the topic of how to begin tracking your macros, how to be a flexible dieter, my philosophies around this, but ultimately it comes down to how many protein, carbs, and fats you're taking in. Now, this gentleman has already done all that work, okay? He knows how many calories he's taken in, he knows how many macros, and he knows how much cardio. The big picture is something I look at as well. What do you do for work? 
What is your daily routine like? How many steps are you getting? How active are you? Are you very sedentary, okay? Because it's not just calories and cardio, okay? A lot of the calories that we burn throughout the day are have nothing to do with exercise, okay? It's called NEAT, or non-exercise activity thermogenesis, right? We also burn calories when we're sleeping. So if you sleep better, you actually burn more calories. So now we're gonna get into, hey, how stressed are you? How much anxiety do you have? Are you able to get a good solid night rest? Are you able to wake up and feel refreshed? If not, you probably got some things going on that you gotta resolve. Because what happens when we're stressed and we go to enough sleep, elevated chronic cortisol levels can make it harder to lose body fat and make it easier to consume more food, okay? You might be hungry. So you don't wanna stack the deck against yourself. Now my man here, I'm gonna assume you're doing it all right. You know how much cardio you're doing, you know how much calories you got, your life's in a good place, and you're just not making progress. And I'll say this, I like your ratios. I actually probably wouldn't reduce your protein or your fats. I'd probably end up reducing your carbohydrates by about 40 or 50 grams per day. If we're at 40, that's 160 calories, right? So if we're taking 160 calories away, and then what I would do with those warm-up cardio sessions that you're doing, move those to 20 minutes, right? Your off day cardio, move those to 60 minutes, all right? You're already at the gym, what's another 15 more minutes? You're already at the gym, what's another 10 minutes? Ultimately, it's going to come down to, we have to adjust those numbers along the way. But I told you that wasn't the only way to be successful, right? It's not just move more and eat less. You gotta be accountable to understand how to do those two things. But once you've been doing that for a while, we can get to a place where we're just not seeing the response we would expect. Yes, we adjust our calories. Yes, we increase our cardio. Yes, we're still getting the same sleep and the same movement, but we're not seeing progress. And this is what I call like phase two of breaking through a plateau. And that's including some recovery, okay? Including some recovery days. Now, the two ways to do that are to reduce your training intensity and volume and to increase your food. Now for a break and a recovery, what I really like to do is bring up carbohydrates. So for someone like you, who's getting around 260 grams of carbohydrates, let's say we brought them down to 210 and you've been on 210 grams of carbs for a couple weeks, I might have you do a week at say 300 grams of carbs, drop your cardio in half and just use that as a recovery maintenance week, right? Drop your and training intensity down and then get back to being more aggressive. This type of recovery weeks, I call them diet breaks are just fantastic for reestablishing where we're at, getting some recovery, being refreshed. I think a lot of us, when we're trying to lose fat, want to lose it in one shot. When I show you these pictures and videos of me, the one thing I've learned over the last decade of getting shredded and competing is that you can't do it in one shot. The more fat you have to lose, the more times you need to take a break, right? If you've got 100 pounds to lose to see the abs or to reach your weight goal, you're going to need to take considerable breaks along the way, right? You can't lose 100 pounds straight and expect to keep muscle, keep your sanity, and also be in a good position when you reach the goal to maintain it. So what do we do? Well, we take these recovery weeks and with, without a coach, which you know I have the fortune of having a coach, if you don't need a coach, the things that I start to look for are, um, as, are my fatigue increasing in the gym, right? Like the weights that used to feel light starting to feel heavy. Is sleep getting interrupted? Am I increasingly food focused? Maybe I start snacking, right? Maybe I start grabbing for things. Maybe I just find myself walking into the kitchen or the pantry for no reason, okay? Understanding that it's not just reach the goal, reach the goal, reach the goal without a break. These diet breaks, these recovery, there's been some great research on it. You know, there was a Matador study done a few years ago and it showed the benefit of a group of people that took weeks off of dieting throughout the process compared to a group that took no breaks throughout the process, okay? The, the, the group that took breaks actually lost more body fat, kept more muscle, and kept more body fat over when the diet was over because ultimately was your diet successful if you reached your goal weight but you weren't able to maintain it? And in a lot of cases what I see is people end up weighing more than they did at the beginning. So I think you're in a wonderful place. I like where your calories are, okay? For a big guy like you, walking is going to be wonderful. You know I've done a bunch of videos now on the benefits of walking and how to increase walking as a way to lose more body fat. If you're not familiar with that, I'll put a link to it below in the description, but how do you use walking? And I'm not just talking about walking outside, but how do you use a treadmill? How do you increase the incline? How do you increase the speed? Okay, how do we know we're burning body fat? How do we know we're losing body fat? All these things are things I love to cover. But for you, my friend, I would make the adjustments I recommended. Drop 40 to 50 
carbohydrates, keep fats and protein the same. I would also double those warm up cardio sessions, maybe add 15 minutes to those rest day cardio sessions, or you could just look at your overall daily energy expenditure in the form of steps. If you're getting 5,000 steps a day, maybe you bump it up to 10. If you live in a place where it's nice to walk outside, maybe it's finally warming up, start taking more walks outside. But ultimately what's gonna make the changes is figuring out the adjustment to make and you have to be accountable to do that. And then when you find yourself stuck, be willing to make the adjustment. Trust the data, okay? Our bodies are so dynamic that the body you start with in a fat loss phase is not the body you're making adjustments from, okay? Sometimes you need a break, sometimes you just need to push yourself harder. I would say, based on what you're telling me, there's plenty of room in the tank to push a little bit harder. Create more of a deficit through cardio and through calories. Okay guys, if you have questions about this topic specifically, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to help you guys address your issues. Hope you're having a great Monday and I'll talk to you tomorrow.